Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vows and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in Tube Lab number 88, we're going to take a first look at Loctal Tubes. And the Summer Sale 2022 is underway, so stay tuned for the end of the show. I've got an incredible number of wonderful vintage tubes to talk about that just came in in time for the sale. Okay, but first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so what in the heck is a Loctal tube? Well, first off, you can spell that L-O-C-T-A-L or L-O-K-T-A-L. Sylvania copyrighted the K version, so everybody else that wanted to handle the Loctal had to respell it. <laughs> Stupid, eh? The Loctal tube was invented by Sylvania in 1939. That's the same year that Phillips introduced the very first miniature 9-pin all-glass tube. Think about the 12AU7, the 12AX7, the A80CC. You're getting the idea. Now, the Loctal tube was meant to be an improvement on the standard 8-pin Octal tube. Let's take a look and see what's going on, or what they were really up to when they came up with this idea. So, the electrodes, that's your electrical connections inside here, have to have a wire connected up. It's hard to see in this one, but they're connected up at the bottom. That wire goes through a hollow pin. Out at the end, they were soldered, and then the wires were clipped off. That's quite a length of wire and it limits the voltage, there's capacitance issues, so the technology, even though it functions quite well, is not perfect. So Sylvania came along and thought, we can improve this. So what they did was they took that wire and made it into a pin. Ah, you say. So that sh short little wire that's connecting up to the electrodes is actually this pin right here. That means they could make a very shallow base. They went metal, and they made it locking. You see that little ring there? These tubes will lock into place. They will not fall out. So they were great for uh, anything that was mobile, a car, a truck, an airplane, industrial equipment, military equipment. So, And, of course, in 1939, the Second World War was just getting underway. So this tube, I think, a lot of the design impetus behind it was the coming war. Now, this is dead technology. I don't know if they made any of these past maybe 1960. I don't have a date for you, but they certainly didn't make them um, into the 70s. So what the last year is, I don't know. The heyday of these tubes was the 1940s and 50s. Now, you might say, why in the heck, Jim, are you interested in completely dead technology? Well, Vacuum tubes is dead technology, but they're still making octal based tubes, right? So you can actually, you don't have to go vintage, you can get a brand new octal tube for most applications, most common audio applications. In this case, we've got tubes that are still sitting in warehouses, in boxes, brand new, new old stock, new in the box, that were made by Sylvania. Sylvania made about, mm, let's say, roughly 90% of all the Loctal tubes, and Sylvania made fabulous sounding triodes. Think about the famous 6SN7 Bad Boys, or the 6SL7 um, higher gain tube that back in the day was used in phono preamps, among other things. Anytime you needed a high gain tube, especially a twin triode, the 6SL7 came to mind. Today, we use the 12AX7 for very much the same applications. So, let's take a look at a bunch of these things. Because it's a long episode, and i got to keep it moving. We're going to revisit the Loctal tube over time. So, this is the 7F7. It's exactly equivalent electrically to the 6SL7. You're going to need to use an adapter that will get from the Loctal socket to an Octal socket. And I've tried quite a few of them. I've got 
three kinds in the store. They work perfectly. Here's a little more expensive one with a brass base. This actually has a ceramic socket that's identical to this one. It's just the housing that's changed. Anyways, the adapters work quite well and because the tubes are so short they actually don't look that bad installed because there's not much base on these tubes to start with. Now, everything I've said about these should mean that these are like the, the greatest tubes ever to have discovered, right? Well, hobbyists have been building small custom amps with the Loctal tube for years and have, I've got one fellow on one of my Facebook groups who says, I don't use Loctal tubes, I use Loctal tubes. They're a lot less expensive. They're available, new old stock, new in the box. Commercial amp builders, other than small boutique builders like us, can't use them because there's just not enough inventory. But the great thing about these tubes is that the best period for um, for triodes sound-wise was the 40s and 50s, early 60s, and these tubes all date from those years. <laughs> so the 7F7 is identical electrically to the 6SL7. This is the very early version. It's hard to see on camera, but there are back-to-back -back oval black plates. This is a premium tube because they're fairly rare. And they came new in the box in great shape. But there's a very affordable later Loctal version that costs a fraction, half of, less than half, a third of what the Octal version would cost. And that's got the angled oval plates that's common to the later Sylvania 6SL7. And I've tried these tubes and they sound almost identical to the Octal version. The design was meant to reduce noise and it does. These tubes have less microphonics, less noise, they're less prone to getting noisy. You lose a little tiny bit of second harmonics, but the detail is better. So everything is a trade-off in audio, right? So that's your differences. It's not, they're really not that much. Okay, so here's the other main Loctal tube we're going to focus on. That's the 7N7. That's electrically equivalent to the 6SN7. There's the GT, the GTA and GTB versions. The way we're going to tell them apart is the back-to-back -back black T plates. Those are the early GT versions with the big, the big uh, chrome dome. Does that remind you of a tube? Well, it should. The early Sylvania mil-spec tubes looked like this, and the early bad boys looked like this as well. Not sure which they are. The mil-spec tubes, the Sylvania mil-spec tubes of that era, um, are extremely expensive and rare. The bad boys are, they're a little bit more available, but they're still fairly rare and expensive. So either way, this is a really great tube to find. And they're affordable, new old stock, new in the box. The more common version, here's one, here's a box. Now you're seeing a lot of Philco boxes. Philco was a large radio manufacturer, tube radio manufacturer in Philadelphia. They had a relationship with Sylvania and they, they went big on Loctal tubes. Uh, a lot of their equipment switched over from the Octal to the Loctal tube. So you're going to see quite often um, rebranding Philco. And here's the tube. This is either the 6SN7 GTA or GTB. And you can tell because the plates are now angled. And the chrome dome gets a little bit more reasonable. And again, the great sounding tubes. Now, is there a downside to these tubes? Yes, there's a couple. One, they lock. <laughs> so if you're using a real socket, and we'll have some kit amps that are going to use this tube specifically, without adapters, you're going to lock them in. They're, they've got a locking ring here, they're called Loctos, they're meant to lock, right? So when it goes in, that ring locks in here. Now, the way to get them out is you rock them forward on the button. You see a little button? I'm not going to push it in because there's no support here for me to hang on to. 
but you would rock it forward and snap it out. That's how it goes. Now with with the adapters, there's no lock. That, that metal assembly has been removed, so there's no fuss with getting them in and out. You just line up the key with the key, just like you would with an octal, there's nothing to it. And in they go, Bob's your uncle. Now they do tend to come out easier if you just rock it forward like you would if it was locking, and then rock it a little bit, and out it comes. Okay. Now, we're going to have a lot more different types of these tubes. We've made a huge investment in inventory, and I've spent months listening to them, and they basically sound just like a Slovenia, as I said, with a little bit less noise, um, less microphonics, and a little bit better detail, and just a little less second harmonics. So over the coming months, you're going to see all sorts of interesting types, the rarer types, come into the store. The more common types are going to be really affordable. Even, you know, having to buy an adapter, they're still going to be affordable. Okay, what's been going on over at Melatone Kits? Well, Charles has almost done the first production run of aluminum top plates for all three of our kit amps. And as well, he's making the first plates for the two phono preamps that we're working on and the GU50 monoblocks. And talking about the GU50, let's see how I've been doing. So it took a week. Let me back out so you can see it. It took me a week to to make the very first master plate and then use the master plate to generate the very first, sorry about the reflection, this is going to be the very first GU50. This will be the prototype build and this week if I have time uh, I'm going to start assembling the components and we'll, we'll drop in occasionally to see how it's going. I've got parts that are in order that I can't finish the actual design, the build, until they come in. I need some higher voltage capacitors because we're running really close to 500 volts and our entire inventory is 450 volts so we've got to, we're buying more expensive capacitors for just for the GU50 okay now with the summer sale it was just pure coincidence a whole bunch of really lovely tubes came in and we're going to get them all up so you can have a look at them that. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see them. This is one of my best sellers. This is the vintage Svetlana 6550C and a whole case came in. Now they're used and but they're testing really good. That means that there are now sets in the store for the R8. That's one of my biggest sellers. I sell complete sets for the Wilsonton amp and there's enough that I was able to put some sets into the store just as quads. Look at this box, an Amperex 6CA7 EL34. What in the world is that? Well, it's going to be good, whatever it is, right? Amperex, of course, was the Philips brand name that they used uh, to sell tubes in the U.S. Oh, yes. This is a new-in-the-box Mullard EL34 XF2 series, a tube that I specialize in. And I've had, I've been waiting to make a new old stock quad for, oh, at least a year. I've had three matched tubes. <laughs> so I finally have a, um, a new old stock, new in the box quad in the store. Now there's going to be different box labels and different labels on the tubes. As you know, they're exactly the same tube. They'll all have the XF2 code on them. There's, as far as EL34s go, this is this is it. There are a couple of other tubes I love, the RFT I love and the Svetlana, but this by far is the best tube, in my opinion, the best EL34. And I'm leaning towards preferring this large single getter, not because they sound different than the double getters, but because they seem to, the chrome seems to hold up better, which is a good indication of vacuum. 
So I'm going to start focusing more and more on just the single getters, unless I find different. You know, when you're researching and bringing in tubes that are 50 years old, your knowledge continuously changes. So I might say something six months ago, and today I've learned something new, and I'll let you know. Here's a great tube. This is the 7193, 7193, U.S. Navy. This is the CV6 type. And if you follow the kit amps, you know that the driver for the URI is this single triode. Have we got a date? We do. June 16th, 1951. Let's get it open and have a look. These are really great sounding tubes. It's why I chose them for the URI monoblocks. It's an interesting tube as well. It's got double top caps. One is the high voltage plate connection and one is the low voltage grid connection. It's a radar tube and we were talking about loctal tubes having very short connections in that base type. This is the same idea. The electrodes have very short wires that led to very little problems electrically with interference. And these were made by the real Kenrad company before they got bought out and the tubes, the later Kenrad tubes are meh, <laughs> they're just not that good. These though, the early Kenrads sound amazing. So these are gonna be great. So a whole bunch of those are gonna go in the store. New old stock, new in the box and affordable. Talking about new old stock, new in the box, here is a Soviet era 6H8C, which is the direct equivalent to the 6SN7 GTB. Let's open it up. The boxes look like hell, don't they? But it's really quite rare to find these tubes in new boxes. These are all dated 1964. These are the photons, and this is the early photon. And it's got waste chrome, and it's got a large, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a large flat plate getter sitting like this. Maybe you can see it right through the middle. Anyways, these are fairly rare. I've been buying them up whenever I can find them. They're great everyday 6SN7s. They're low noise, they've got excellent detail, they sound good, and I run these every day. And I keep my premium tongues and Sylvanias for special occasions. In my opinion, moving forward especially, the availability and the cost of the premium vintage tubes for our audio equipment is just, they're going to become harder to find. The condition's going to be worse. They're going to be much more expensive to, until we can't find them at all. So why not take care of them and have them for 50 more years, 100 more years? If you only run them for special occasions and you take care of them, store them carefully, they'll last forever. Or as close to ever as anybody's going to get. Our lifetimes, anyways. La I save the best to last, as always. I've never seen these tubes, new old stock, new in the box. These are the, I got it upside down. This is the 6HNC. That's the Soviet number for the 6SL7. These are the melts tubes with the metal base. Now, they were all wrapped up beautifully, but it took so long in my test film to get them out that I left them partly unwrapped. This is how they came though in the box. They were all wrapped up like a little Christmas package. <laughs> and this is just amazing. Um, they really, I mean, of the hundreds I've brought in and handled, I've never seen them wrapped up like this. Let's see if we got a date code on them. There we go, 1956 with an X. So that's uh, October 1956. There's the logo is, even though they're faint, because they were a kind of a lightly etched logo, I think. You can see the M in the middle, the stylized M. Bases are absolutely perfect. And these are great. A lot of these came in. Uh, they weren't cheap, but I'm going to have lots of match pairs, new old stock, new in the box. What a great way to go into summer, eh? Okay, well, if you've stayed to the end, let's find the summer discount code. Here it is. So, plug in summer 2022, all one word. That gets you 15% off your entire purchase. 
Excluding the kit amps, there's just not enough margin on kit amps to ever discount them. And it excludes, of course, gift certificates. But other than that, your entire purchase will be discounted. And if your order is $150, you can't see it, but if your order is $150 or more after you apply the discount, the shipping is free. Have a great summer, everyone. Stay safe. Have fun. Oh, and before I forget, this sale is running for a week. So it ends a week Friday. So that's June the 24th is the last day. Cheers, everyone. This is Jim from Bowles and More, signing off.